Hi all, we're going to make a flashcard video app on how to use StudyStack. We're at the StudyStack home screen. You want to go up to the top where it says sign up and then you want to create your username, password, make sure you're 13 years or older, and then put your email address in and sign up. If you've already got an account, you'll just hit login or you can hit login from this upper right hand corner here. Okay, I've already logged in, so I'm going to go over to my page where I have got some card sets already made from way back when I was in graduate school. Not way back, but in any case, you can see that uh, I have used this app extensively, at least for a couple of years. I tried other apps like this one the best. There is Quizlet, Study Blue, all kinds of other things have great features you could try. Make sure you try at least one other type or one other app to see which suits you for now. This is just a way that you can always attack information when you're given a lot of it and you sometimes don't know where to start or you don't know what to do. If you immediately use the same technique over and over again, you'll lessen your anxiety about the information uh, that you have to learn and you'll also be able to choose a different method later. But if you don't have a method, then you have so many methods to choose from that you won't know where to begin. So StudyStack just lets me always find uh, a, a beginning place with a lot of information. And in a doctoral program, lots of information, especially on anatomy and physiology and radiology and that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you how to make a flashcard, and then I'm going to show you how it works. First of all, just as an example, let's go with something that might be relevant to you. So here I've got some cards I can uh, look at. And I've just opened a stack. Uh, it gives you the name of the stack at the top left. You can see this is Thamadaki Neuro 2. I've got it listed under chiropractic. Uh, you can have it listed under anatomy or nursing or dental hygiene or just the subject like biology, anatomy, physiology, doesn't matter, whatever is relevant to you. I could have the uh, flashcard go into the no, don't know pile or I can have it go into the no pile, meaning that I'm familiar enough with it. Here are some options up here. You can see this middle blue column is telling you under remaining cards how many you have to go so you can kind of start knowing how long it takes to get through this, as well as there's your timer down here in the far right hand corner where it says pause. So I can pause it or continue it, and that at least gives me a way to predict how long do I need to go through this stack after I've done it the first time. And you'll see you get faster. Here are the options you can use up here. You can listen to the The card. glossopharyngeal nerve conveys information from the blank and blank viscera. I'm not sure why she's not Head and neck. Because it's on a timer. So here's what happened here. I could go to options and I could put my cards on autoplay. And I can change this little bar here that shows me the delay. I could set a long delay up to eight seconds and then I could ask the bot to speak the cards. When that starts to happen, Now, I'm not sure why it's not happening right now, but when that happens, they will start to read the cards to you. And that's really effective when you're busy. Your hands are busy. Maybe you're washing the dishes. Um, maybe you're um, on the road. You're in the car and you want to hear the cards read to you. You can set it to do that. You can also fix a card in real time, meaning if you find an error. This is so, so great when you're using a flashcard program because you are constantly proofreading and going behind yourself with new information that you've learned and mnemonics, whatever it is. So you could go and you could go into the card and edit it and then you could save it and then it would be uh, fixed in real time. Let's go down here and just look at some options. You've got retry, shuffle, and restart. You've got all of these games you can play. Matching, kind of fun, tells you when you're wrong, tells you when you're right. I'm not going to get this right because I'm not thinking right now about that information. 
So let's come down here too. You could play these things. You could give yourself a quiz, which are about 20 multiple choice questions. It will give you a test, which are 30 questions. Some fill in the blank, some matching, and finally given the um, question instead of the answer. I would avoid this thing here called study stack unless you just really get into flashcards. It's just a higher level of organization for actual flashcards. I would just stick with this one here called flashcards. If you'll come down to the bottom of your uh, cards, you'll notice that they are shown below in this table format. And this table format is really handy because you can simply cover the answer with a piece of paper, or I'll show you a different way to do that in just a minute. And then you can scan. You can just go left and right. You can use the top of the iPad or device to just show you the next question, etc. But you do have this table, and the table is what I like about StudyStack. Now here are the options in the middle of the screen. Embed, Apps, Export, Print, and Edit. I like this print option. That table that I just showed you, you can print it. And so here's the printable version of your flashcards. I would print this and have a physical copy to study for a cumulative exam and or for a board exam. So I use these for board exams. Um, in my profession, we have five, and so it's a lot of studying, obviously, leading up to that, and then there's some time for review. And when you're reviewing, you don't want to go through all of your flashcards. It takes too long. You want to have a format like this where you can scan. That means just go down the page very quickly and review instead of learn, right? Because reviewing is where you want to be for boards. If you insist on printing cards, here are all the options you can do that with. The most economical is business cards. That's what's in the middle of the screen. Make sure that you check draw borders because you have to physically cut these cards with a paper cutter or scissors, and so you need to have the borders on there. If you decide you want to print cards out, physical cards, Make sure that when you print them, you set it on two-page printing. If you set it on one page, you'll get the questions on one page and then a whole other page for the answers. That's not how you want flashcards. You want to always click two or two-sided printing, excuse me, not two-page printing, but two-sided printing so that you have the question on one side and the answer on the other. Let's go back to the actual dashboard and look at, we have to just go back to the beginning here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go back to this, try it one more time. There's the dashboard. So I can go to my dashboard, see some cards. If I want to go in and edit a stack, I can also go to this far right hand column and hit edit, and that takes me into the physical cards themselves, where I can go down to the bottom, add new cards. Here it says add blank rows in the middle, or I can save changes. All right. Let's look at actually making flashcards. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. On the far right-hand corner at the top, there's a green bar. It says Create New Stack. Create New Stack. I'm going to show you that again. It says Create New Stack on the far right-hand top of the page. I will need to name the stack something that I want. So whatever chapter it is, I'm just going to pick a random. You need to title the chapter. The description needs to be probably the semester and the year that you took this because your cards are going to accrue and you're going to be, want to be able to go back to the school you're at, the school at which you were studying, and also the professor under which you were studying because you take lots of different classes at the same school. This way you can refer back. Um, I put the year in there because I might take the same class or subject in undergraduate and then take a much more intensive version of that class in graduate school. 
or in a clinical professional program. So you'll want to really put the year in there so you'll know where you were and what you were doing. These three check boxes that you have here. Generate random fill. I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to uncheck allow others to edit this set. It is not my preference to have uh, strangers come in and random, randomly <laughs> um, change my slides um, or my flashcards. So I'm just going to uncheck that. If you don't mind that, if you like to use crowdsourcing uh, as your proofreading, then you can check that box. I'm going to leave it unchecked. Allow others to view this set. Fine with me. Here's the caveat. While you are working on the slide set, you know, if you're going to come back and add cards to it because it's not done, leave it in unfinished. If you put it in a finished category, if you choose a category, say you choose a category, what that's going to tell other people who are reading your cards is that you're done. And so if you're not done, and you've only added 40 cards, if you've already chosen a category, they're going to think that you're done, and that means they're done once they get done with those 40 cards. And clearly, 40 cards isn't going to cut it for a test. So we're going to put it into unfinished until we're done, and then I'm going to come back and change the category into the final category. And it's by profession, it's by subject, whichever your preference. In study stack, you must hit save changes for everything. You must train yourself to hit save changes every time you do anything. Let's make a card or two. You see where I went? I went to data. Here's where I'm going to make cards. Notice there are seven sets of blanks for question and answer here. I want you to enter these seven and then hit save change and then add more blank rows, but not until you've added these first seven. Now let's say I'm adding, and of course I could voice dictate this uh, if the words aren't too unknown to the um, system you're using. I'm just going to use endocrine def for endocrine definition. And we'll say that endo is inside. Crime is secrete. So of course this means to secrete inside. I'm going to use the voice control now. into the bloodstream. So another word I'd want to think about, well, if there's a secretion into the bloodstream, there must be one that's a secretion that's not into the bloodstream. And so that's going to be the exocrine definition, because you want to be able to tell these two things apart. And we would say again, um, exo is outside. That tells you that we're not going to be in the bloodstream anymore, I would say. You have to click off of the keyboard every time or it'll copy it. So between each of these blanks, you need to click keyboard if you're using voice dictation or you'll get a copy again. The word lumen, L-U-M-E-N, that might set your radar off in that maybe you don't know what a lumen is. It might be in the definition on the slide. You don't know what it is. So flashcards are great because you can come back and actually add in vocabulary as an individual flashcard. So if you don't know what a lumen is, you can go look it up and read it, but it's just an empty space inside of a vessel or an organ.
like a blood vessel or the stomach or the intestine. In any event, it just is a different place um, from the bloodstream, and it's a different place, obviously, from the surface of the body. We're not going to go into all that right now. This is just for demonstration. Now, after I've finished all seven, I'm going to do that important thing in study stack, and I'm going to hit Save Changes. Save Changes. Got it? If you don't remember if you did it or not, hit it again. Now that I have seven made, you know, if I were down here and I had the seventh made, I can add blank rows. I can do seven more and then hit Save Change, and then I can add blank rows again. This is a warning for study stack users. If you hit add blank rows as you're doing this and you're just filling all of these up and you're not saving in between, at some point, like in life, something's going to happen and cause you to have a study stack failure. And the failure would be if your elbow hit the back button or you hit the back screen, if your cat ran across the keyboard, if your power went out, if you suddenly lost internet connection, whatever it was, if you haven't hit save changes between every seven that you've entered, then all of the cards that you made since the last time you hit save changes, even if it was way back up here, all of the cards will disappear. And if it sounds like I know what I'm talking about, you're right. So I'm willing to lose seven cards if an accident occurs, but I'm not willing to lose 200. I think when I did it, I lost 200, 250. Anyway, it took me many hours to go back and redo those cards again. There's no way to get those cards back if you accidentally delete them. So hit safe change, just train yourself to do it every time, and then add your blank rows. Hit save change, add your blank rows after you've completed those seven, et cetera, et cetera. You may also import text from an Excel document. If you have a table, chart, whatever, you can watch a video on that. I learned how to do it a while ago. I'm not willing to uh, go through that tutorial right now, but there's different ways you have to do that. If you're familiar with Excel and other uh, documents like that, you notice that you have to add delimiters in order to separate the cards themselves, separate the sentences. You can use this with a Word doc, I think, but Excel works pretty well with it, and so do the free versions. If you want to figure that out, bless you. All right. The last thing on here you could do would be to go to Slides. Here's where you can add an image to your slide. You would choose a file, and then you would give it a label. You can change the background. If you don't like purple, something else. You can label the background, blah, blah, blah. Once you're done with that, what do you do? You hit Save Changes, and then you can make a new slide with a new image. This is extra. Most people don't have time for extra. Let's just do straight up slides. Okay, I'm going to hit Save Changes. I'm done. Now I'm going to go to my dashboard. I should. I've got these on dates. So you can see the most recent that we've done. Let's say we did the one today. Okay, I just clicked on it. What is the endocrine system? There's our card from today. Let's say I don't know that. What is the exocrine system? Let's say I knew that one. There's my empty ones that I haven't filled out, so you'll want to get rid of those. But they won't hurt you. you just put them away. All right, so I got a 33% pass rate because I only knew 33% of my cards. Let's me retry the cards and the don't know or retry all of the cards. 